Dear students, today we will talk about the security of your computer and its contents and we will learn about forms of attacks that could be made to destroy your computer or the contents available on your computer. So computer system and its contents can be attacked by many ways and many of these are using malicious software and this is abbreviated as malware and that malware or malicious softwares are installed on your computer to destroy the computer system and its contents. Let's see how and what types of malwares and malicious softwares are available. So if we categorize malicious softwares, we have viruses, worms, Trojan horses and spyware. So let's discuss each of them one by one. What is virus? A virus is basically a program that is going to be injected into a program that is stored inside your computer. So basically virus is not some program which is individually available on your system that is part of your some software that is already available on your machine and that becomes the part of that, that machine. And when host is executed, virus also executed. So host means that particular software which is in which that virus is residing. And what it can do? It can degrade portions of operating system. For example, it can destroy uh, your content in the RAM. It can destroy some register contents, etc. And some powerful viruses. And then it can erase large blocks of mass storage. So whatever is available stored on your hard drive, it can erase large blocks. So this means that your file will be corrupted because your file, you know, that file is, in, uh, is uh, retrieved in a sequential manner. And if some of the content of the file is not available, has been erased, this means that is not a complete file and you will have corrupt copy of that file. And it can corrupt the data of other programs as well. Then what are the worms? A worm is an auto autonomous program that transfers itself through a network. So whenever worm becomes part of your computer by some person who want to uh, basically make it possible that your system is not being used properly. So it taking up residence in your computer and forwarding copies of itself to other computers. So this means your computer and the computers available on your network might be affecting with the worm. Then Trojan horses. A Trojan horse is a program that enters into a computer system and it discussed, it pretends itself that it is very important program of your system, although it is not. For example, it pretends that it is a game, it pretends it is a utility program or some other very important program and it remains in your system. However, it is basically a program which is going to affect your system performance and it can start immediate or after some event. So whenever Trojan horse is available in your system, so that start affecting immediately or it can wait for some event. So for example, these kind of Trojan horses are transferred using email attachments. So this means you should not open the email attachments, especially from unknown sources. Then another type is spyware, which is sometimes called sniffing software that collects information from your computer. For example, your credit card number, your password, your email account and some other sensitive information and tries to capture all of the inf all such information and keep sending this information to its originator. So sometimes company, companies use to make customer profile. So for example, if you are using a system of a company so that company can have a spyware and that can try to identify your profile that what you like what you dislike and based on it 
it gives you some advertisements and then searching passwords and credit card numbers as we discussed and then there is another type of uh, security risk this is called phishing so unlike unlike spyware asking explicitly the required information normally using an email so you might have received an email in your life from some unauthorized person pretending to be some security agency or for example sometime you receive that we are hotmail we are gmail we are yahoo sending you an email to inquire about your password and about your uh, other cre credentials and you should provide all of this information otherwise your account will be blocked so such an information is an explicit asking from the user so and that is not a actual um, basically person who is asking so for example if you are receiving an email from gmail actual gmail company so you might see that the email address of gmail company is not having gmail.com domain it is being sent by some other domain or some an other unauthorized person so sometime user feels that this is correct and they give their information to uh, the required person pretending who is pretending like a government law enforcement agency financial institute etc and then there is another form of security risk this is called denial of service attacks so process of overloading a computer with messages so there are too many messages that are going to be generated over the network an attacker usually plants software on numerous unsuspected computers on the network and then those computers when asked are making too many messages on the network and that becomes the denial of service that the, you are no more able to communicate with other computers because all of the network is busy and then there could be spams these are unwanted junk emails and medium of phishing and trojan horses those are sent using spam emails so you might have seen that um, popular uh, email companies like gmail hotmail yahoo they have a spam filter mechanisms and they try to put spam in their spam folder or junk folder so if we summarize today's topics we have learned about different forms of attacks viruses worms trojan horses spyware phishing denial of service and spams